Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, February the 2nd, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, the FCC chairman calls for internet regulation. Then, McDonald's Museum quality food. And how the border battle could cost DHS paychecks. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Is this like Planet Idiot or something? I, I mean, I don't even know what to do anymore. Well, today, new details emerged as to how Obama and the Department of Homeland Security have violated immigration laws and the economic consequence of those violations. National Review has the economic consequences. They report that the federal government has issued nearly five and a half million work permits to foreign nationals since 2009. Now, this was a new report from the Center for Immigration Studies with government data that they've just obtained. Now, National Review points out yet again that this, the number of work permits, this five and a half million work permits given to law-breaking aliens for the most part explains how all net job growth since 2007 has come from foreign workers. But InfoWars breaks down the criminal aspects of this. This is a story from Kit Daniels. Obama criminally opens the border for a flood of illegals. He says that the feds gave 1.7 million work permits to aliens whose legal status is unknown, 1.2 million to aliens with visas that did not authorize employment, and nearly a million work permits to aliens who are known to have crossed the border illegally. Now, the spokesperson for the Center for Immigration Studies pointed out, this is a huge parallel immigration work authorization system that is outside the limits set by Congress. It inevitably impacts opportunities for U.S. workers, it damages the integrity of the immigration system, and it encourages illegal immigration. And they point out in this article, Kit does, it's not the only time that the Obama administration has enacted de facto amnesty. Last year, InfoWars discovered that the Border Patrol was purchasing bus tickets and travel vouchers for illegal aliens to ship them deeper into the United States at taxpayer expense. In other words, as they point out, this is 3.8 million of these are actually violations of the law, giving work permits to people who came here illegally. But of course, the Republicans are not going to do anything to impeach Obama for his illegal actions. Will they even shut down Homeland Security? We could hope so. But the best we're going to get from them is to use Homeland Security's budget to try to push Obama to doing the right thing. Good luck with that. Instead, he's pushing back, saying that the GOP wants to shut down Homeland Security. If only they didn't love it so much. In an article from the Daily Mail, they say Obama threatens stopping paychecks to 143,000 Homeland Security employees by the end of the month if Republicans don't give up the fight over amnesty for illegal immigrants. He warned that the GOP uh, should not hold DHS funding hostage as they fight him on sweeping immigration policy changes that he made on his own, yes, without legal basis. They say that the Republicans, of course, as we know, they funded the rest of the government pretty much through the continuing omnibus bill that they did right after they came back, but they only funded Homeland Security for a short period of time. Now what he's saying is, is that they really want to shut down Homeland Security, and he said that the Republicans said it would be no great loss if they did. Unfortunately, that's not what they did say. They point out, though, that the number of long-term unemployed has risen, as has the average duration of their joblessness. The number of Americans receiving food stamps is up, the rate of home ownership is down, and many others. They also point out further down the article, they say that although he points out the best job growth in manufacturing has happened the last couple of years since the 1990s, they say that's only true if you go back to January 2010. But there has been a net loss of manufacturing jobs during the president's administration. And it gets even worse. We have an article from Reuters pointing out that U.S. consumer spending in December is the weakest since 2009. They say U.S. consumer spending recorded its highest decline since late 2009 in December with households saving the extra cash from cheaper gasoline. Other data on Monday showed that factory activity has cooled in January, suggesting that the economy may have entered this year on a slightly softer footing than has been expected. Now, it's not just that all the new jobs have gone to foreign workers. It's not just that we've had a loss of income, a loss of purchasing power. No, we're actually going to have a massive loss of wealth, too, if Obama gets his way. Americans for Tax Reform point out that he's looking to do a stealth increase 
in the death tax by changing the rate from 40% to nearly 60%. And here's how they calculate this. Right now, if someone were to die, they would calculate the inheritance on, let's say, a home at either the initial basis or the basis at the person, the market value at the per time the person dies. He's going to change it to the market basis at the time the person dies. Why is this a massive increase and why is this going to really harm not only families, but small businesses and farmers? Well, because if you look back at the example they give, let's say that 40 years ago, dad bought a house for $10,000 and today it's worth $120,000. Now, of course, they're going to tax you on $110,000 gain, saying that you made a profit. Is that really a profit? You've got a 40-year-old house. Did you really make $110,000 profit? No, this should be called the Federal Reserve Tax. What they are taxing you on is the amount of money that the federal government has devalued the currency on. That's essentially a depreciation in your purchasing power. Yet they will turn that into a tax in order to confiscate even more money from you after you die from your family. And as we point out on today uh, on Infowars.com, they said there's some frightening honesty coming out of Congress. They say as we're running out of money, and Congress has just admitted that they're essentially broke, we'll talk about this resolution, but they point out in this article that they're going to come after those who aren't going to push back that hard. Of course, that's going to be the unborn because they are the ones who are going to be paying back this massive debt that we're creating. They're also going to be going after those who have died with even more taxes. But here's what they said in the continuing resolution that is really pretty amazing. They go through and they say, basically the federal government, this is from the House of Representatives, they passed this, they said the federal government is operating at an annual deficit, it's increasing its outstanding debt every year, whereas we're now $18 trillion in debt, whereas we've borrowed 14 cents for every dollar we spent in 2014, whereas foreign governments, individuals and corporations own 47% of that federal debt, Whereas Social Security's unfunded liabilities in 2014 are over $10 trillion over the next 75 years and $25 trillion indefinitely. Look, that is a very, very low figure, especially when you look at the open-ended dependency as we bring people in from all over the world, not just from South America, Central America, from all over the world with our open borders and extend the welfare state to them. That's Cloward and Piven. So they go down this whole list of whereas. And what is the bottom line? Well, the bottom line with all their whereas is as they point out the many different ways that you can measure the bankruptcy of the federal government, they say, therefore, the federal government should not bail out state and local government employee pension plans and other post-employment benefit plans, and state and local government should immediately institute reforms. In other words, look out for yourselves because we don't have your back. The thing about these unfunded pension plans at the state and local level is that they are unfunded. Where are we going to get the money? Things are going to get quite nasty because all of this is going to be coming due in a very short period of time as the baby boomers retire and their pension promises don't have any money attached to them. Well, stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about who owns the internet or should anybody own it. And we're also going to ask, what do fast food French fries teach us about vaccines? Stay with us. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. 
Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food in our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, story on InfoWars.com from the Associated Press asks the question, who owns the Internet? or who should own it. I don't think anyone should own it. But of course, the majority Democrats and the FCC want to not only control it, but tax it as well. They point out Tom Wheeler, chairman of the FCC, says that he's keeping the question in mind, who owns the internet, as he pitches the biggest regulatory shakeup to the telecommunications industry since 1996. Actually, it's the largest regulatory shakeup, or we should say the largest takeover, since the inception of the internet. This is going to subject the internet to the control of a bureaucracy for the first time in its history. And what are they going to do with it? They're going to tax it for one thing, but of course they're also going to be the gatekeepers. He says this, however, without any sense of irony. He says we need yardsticks in place to determine what is in the best interest of the consumers as opposed as to what is in the best interest of the gatekeepers. Well, of course, the FCC wants to make itself the gatekeeper, not just the corporations. Understand that if you want net neutrality, and I would like to see net neutrality personally, but if you want that, you can handle that as a separate single issue. Congress could do something about it, rather than turning this over to an unelected, unaccountable bureaucracy that will control all aspects of the internet. That is simply a mask that they're using to get this done. So, of course, they run down the various uh, aspects of this. They say, well, what are the options? And they give a couple of regulatory excuses saying, well, they could go back to the 1996 Telecommunications Act, or even better yet, we could go back to 1934 and use some regulatory fiction that actually was set up to apply to radio and telegraph. We could try to twist that into a control of the Internet. And that looks like that's what they're going to do. They're going to vote on this. They say, February 26, Wheeler is expected to have the support of the two other Democrat commissioners, the two Republican commissioners have made it clear that they do not uh, support applying Title II. That's the 1934 regulation. Republicans have pitched an idea that would enforce basic open Internet rules, but could strip the FCC of its ability to help local municipalities build their own broadband. Again, we don't need to have the FCC step in and take over all control of the FCC for either of those things for either net neutrality or to increase bandwidth. But why do they want to increase bandwidth? Well, it's so that they can spy on you to a greater extent. They also point out then there's taxes. The Progressive Policy Institute has estimated that treating the internet like phone service would trigger taxes and fees up to $15 billion a year. What does this mean for you individually? Well, that would be $67 for each wired service. In other words, whenever they bring it into your house, $67 for each of those occurrences. And then if you got a phone, a wireless phone, $72 each month for each of those devices. Hey, you got a couple of hundred dollars sitting around the house that you don't need, right? You can play that each month for these uh, new regulations. Listen, this is why we should really be concerned about the government when we see how they have lied and manipulated and tried to shut down the internet in a variety of ways. And of course, using the FCC to try to do it from a regulatory standpoint is just one of three or four methods that they're going to try to use this year to exercise absolute control over the internet. If we look at what they did to Barrett Brown, that should make us all very concerned about what the FCC and the government will do. Why should we want to turn it over to a government that would do what he's talking about 
what they did to him. And of course, for the first time, he is free to talk about this. He said one of the good things about having just been sentenced to 63 more months besides the time that he's served